If there's one thing student pilots have the hardest time grasping initially, other than takeoffs and landings, it's usually how VORs work and how we use them. First, let's define what a VOR is. A VOR, or Very High Frequency Omnidirectional Range, is a type of ground-based radio navigation system that provides pilots with radial information. In other words, it tells pilots the direction to or from a specific location on the ground. Radials radiate from the center and describe where you are from the station, while bearings are what we use to describe what you'd fly to the station. A VOR station is made up of three main components, the transmitter, the antenna, and the receiver. The transmitter sends out a radio signal in all directions, which is then picked up by the antenna and sent to the receiver. The receiver then uses this information to determine the direction to or from the VOR station. The receiver displays this information using two types of indicators. If we are looking at our plane from the top down and comparing it to the VOR receiver, we can think of it this way. The CDI, or course deviation indicator, provides horizontal or lateral position information. The to or from indicator in this case will show us north or south of the station, or top to bottom from this top down view. You can see that in reference to north, as I move the airplane from side to side, or east to west, the CDI shows our current position in relation to the course we have dialed into the receiver, which currently is 360. As I move the airplane up and down, or north to south, you see the to and from indicator flipping as we pass the station. It will always point in the direction of the station from the aircraft's position. Notice how when crossing the horizontal boundary of the station from north to south, the receiver shows a red flag that reads NAV. This flag is an indication that the receiver isn't properly receiving information or can't display it. This happens when there is no signal being received, or in the case illustrated here, during station passage. Station passage is when the plane is actively crossing over the VOR or crossing over the horizontal boundary based on the radial dialed in. At this moment, the airplane is neither to nor from the station. It is right in line with it. Therefore, the to from indicator can't give you accurate information as it momentarily flips to the flag before flipping the other direction. So put simply, the VOR puts a signal out in all directions, which we divide up into 360 different radials. Every radial has a bearing that correlates to it on the reciprocal heading. The 360 radial would have a bearing to the station of 180, and the 180 radial would have a bearing to the station of 360. It's all simply a question of whether you want to fly to the VOR or away from it. Here you can see our heading is 180, or south. The VOR receiver is dialed to the 360 radial and showing us on course as evident by the CDI being centered. The to from indicator is showing us as being from the station. Watch now what happens as we turn the OBS, or Omni Bearing Selector, so that the receiver is set to the 180 radial. You see the to from indicator flip and the CDI recenters itself, now showing that we are on course and flying to the station. As we fly around the VOR, you will see the CDI deviate and the to from indicator flip. When you arrive at any given point, you can use the OBS to center the CDI, which will show you which way you need to fly to get to the station. Here you see the CDI centers on the 270 radial and the to from indicator is pointing to from, or in this case, to the east. If we turn the heading of our plane to east, you'll see we are pointed right at the VOR and can fly to it. There is something important you need to be aware of though when navigating to a station with a from indication. First, let's look at how the CDI reacts when we are flying to a station with a to indication. You'll see the CDI move opposite the direction of our plane, indicating that the course is off to that side of our current track, and we need to turn toward the CDI to re-intercept the course. However, when we do that same thing with a from indication, you'll notice that the CDI now moves in the same direction as our aircraft. This is called reverse sensing, and it can cause a lot of problems if you're not aware of it. 
the CDI itself has now essentially become our aircraft in relation to the course, and we need to fly in the opposite direction of the CDI to re-intercept our course. If you pretend the CDI is our plane, and that plane needs to be centered on the receiver, it makes this type of navigation a lot easier, and you simply fly the CDI into the center of the receiver. Plane goes left, CDI goes left. Plane goes right, CDI goes right. It's important to note that with an HSI, or Horizontal Situation Indicator, you don't have to deal with the problem of reverse sensing. No matter where you are or what radial you have dialed in, the CDI on an HSI will always show where the course is relative to the airplane. You can see here that with the 180 radial dialed in, we still have the to from indicator pointing to the station at 360, and as we move the plane side to side, the CDI moves opposite the airplane, showing where the course is in relation to our position. So now what about those pesky test questions asking you to identify which airplane is the correct one based on certain readings given on the receiver? Well, knowing what we know now, this becomes very easy. The first thing we need to do is identify the heading that the airplane is indicating. Here we see a heading toward the southwest of 198. So we know our airplane is going to be pointing towards 198. We can disregard all these other aircraft not pointing in that direction, and we find that we have two aircraft pointing in the correct direction. Now we turn our attention to the VOR receiver. First, because we are looking at this scenario from the top down with north up, we want our receiver to show north up as well. From there, if we split the receiver into four sections, we can highlight each half that has indications by either the to or from indicator or the CDI. When we do this, we end up with one quarter that has no color on it, and the opposite quarter that has both colors overlapping on it. The corner with no color tells us that this is the direction our aircraft is from the VOR. The opposite corner with the overlapping colors is the general direction we need to fly in order to go to the VOR. With the northeast section free of all color, we know that the answer to our question here is this plane up here to the northeast of the VOR. Let's try another one, and I'll give you a few seconds to try to figure it out for yourself. Pause the video here if you need more time. First, let's look at the heading of our aircraft. Looks like 232 to the southwest. Identify which aircraft don't point that direction and eliminate them. Next, color in your halves on the receiver. The to from indicator is pointing to, so we'll color in the top half. And the CDI is off to the left, so we'll color in the left half. This leaves our southeast quadrant without color, telling us that the airplane to the southeast in the diagram is our correct aircraft. One more thing before we finish up here today. You may be wondering what these 10 little dots are along the center of the receiver. Each of these dots represents two degrees of deviation. Currently you see us dialed into the 347 radial with a 2 indication and the CDI is showing a 7 degree deviation. How can we calculate which radial we are currently on based on this information? You may have guessed that since we are 7 degrees off, we will have to either add or subtract 7 degrees from the currently dialed 347. We can go back to our trusty shading technique to tell us which one it is. If we shade the top half and the left half, we know that we are somewhere between the 167 and 087 radial from the station. This means our bearing to the station will be somewhere between 257 and 347. With that information, we know we'll need to turn the OBS clockwise which means we need to subtract 7 degrees from our currently dialed 347, and that gives us a bearing to the station of 340. One more time, but this time with a from indication. We see the CDI is deflected 8 degrees. We are currently dialed into the 291 radial, and when we apply our shading, we see we are somewhere between the 201 and 291 radial from the station. This means our bearing will be somewhere between the 021 and 111 courses. 
Because of this, we can see we will need to turn our OBS clockwise, which means we will be subtracting that 8 degrees once again. 291 minus 8 gives us the 283 radial, which when we look at the bottom of the receiver, we see a course to the station of 103. Turn the plane to fly a track of 103 and you'll go straight there. If you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to leave a like and a comment letting me know what other topics you'd like to see video explanations of. Also be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of my upcoming content. Until next time, resume your own navigation.